The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Yeah. It's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Now let's join the great Gildersleeve. After a day at the office, or almost a day, he has dropped into Peavy's pharmacy where we find him concluding a small transaction. Thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Call again. Maybe I will, Peavy. Don't take any wooden nickels. Hey, what's this? Looks cute. Uh, that, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, uh, men's perfume, eh? Oh, it isn't exactly perfume. I, I believe it's called a grooming essential. It's a perfume, no matter what they call it. I'm surprised to find you displaying it. Well, I was forced to put it in, Mr. Gildersleeve. The young fellows want it. They say women find it attractive. You don't believe that, do you? I don't know. These young fellows seem to use up a lot of it, and they keep coming back for more. Oh, but this notion about women... They're... Well, I, I only know what they tell me, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I've never tried it myself. I'm glad to hear it. If a man can't attract women without dousing himself with some kind of stinkum, he shouldn't admit it. What's it smell like? Yeah. It's uh, inoffensive. It's supposed to smell like pine needles. Here, I'll open one of these and you can have a sniff. Don't bother. Yeah, pretty fancy bottle. Yeah, make a nice table ornament after it's empty. I can't seem to get the top off of the darn Let thing. me do it. No, I've got it. If I could... Just... Oh, Peavy! Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm terribly sorry. I... All over my vest. I'll smell for days. Oh, oh, no, no. It wears off in a few hours. Well, an ordinary dose might. You spilled half the bottle on me. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's not a bad smell. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, would you be interested in buying the rest of the bottle? Doesn't smell as good as all that, Peavy. Well, I, I can price it quite attractively. Oh, what do you mean? Well, you've got about two dollars worth on you already. What? Yes, it's a five dollar item. But I'll let you have the rest of it for two dollars and a half. Nice ornament. I don't need any ornaments. I don't believe it's going to excite any women, either. Well, have it your own way. All I know is a lot of young women buy it for their husbands. They do? Yeah. Let you have it for two dollars. Well, all right. But wrap it up, Peavy, and get this through your head. I'm not buying this because I need it. <laughs> you don't have to tell me, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> Yes, it's me, Leroy. Hey, a package. What's in it? Nothing for you, my boy. It's, um, shaving lotion. Oh. Phew, what, is that what I smell? Must be powerful stuff. I accidentally spilled some on my vest. Doing your homework? Yeah. Possibly you could concentrate better if the evening paper wasn't so near you. May I have it? Sure, I finished it. Uh, so I see. <laughs> Hi, uh, George. I don't know why I read the evening paper. Same stuff I read this morning. Now I think of it, the morning paper had the same stuff I read last night. <laughs> Nothing happening, I guess. Good evening, Anki. Leroy, have you seen my notebook? Oh, good evening, my dear. Anki, what have you got on you? You smell simply delicious. <laughs> you think so? Hey, Peavy sold me some stuff. Well, what's the name of it? You smell just like Wallace Weber. He was two seats away from me in history this morning. It was heavenly. <laughs> well, I believe it's called spruce. Spruce up with spruce or something like that. Gosh, is that spruce? What am I supposed to faint when they smell it? How do you know, Leroy? I read an ad in Esquire. Leroy? <laughs> I forbid you to read Esquire till you're 21. Is that clear? Oh, for corn's sake... Did Leroy give you the message for Miss Goodwin, Anki? He did not. Confound it, Leroy. What's the matter with you? What was the message? She wants you to sing at a PTA meeting tonight. Oh, we should both have forgotten it. Oh, I thought you liked to sing in public. Not particularly, my dear. Anyway, there's something about those parent-teacher meetings. Between the singing and the perfume, you'd have the ladies swooning. Yeah. Oh, 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 Mr. Gillisley! 
<laughs> that will do, Leroy. Well, anyway, I told Miss Goodman I'd give you the message. All right, my dear, you've given it. I will not sing at any PTA meeting tonight. Okay, okay. Leroy, have you seen my notebook? What notebook? The new one. The one with... The... Oh, there it is. Leroy, have you been using it? Why would I want to use your lousy notebook? Gosh, I think everything you own is so wonderful. Well, you leave my things alone in the future, and if you... Leroy! Uncle Mort, look! All over the first page of it! Now, now, what's he done? I was just practicing my signature. Leroy Forrester. Leroy J. Forrester. Leroy P. Forrester. You have no middle name, Leroy. What is this? It looks better with something in there. <laughs> oh, dear. If you wish to practice your signature, Leroy, or any signature, kindly do not do so in your sister's notebook. Just tear the page out, my dear. It's no tragedy. Not to you, maybe. Doorbell. Will you answer it, please, Marjorie? I'll get it. Bertie's getting it. Everyone heard her, Leroy. Good evening, Miss Goodman. Good evening, Bertie. Is Mr. Gildersleeve at home? I'd just like to see him for a minute if it's convenient. Oh, I'm sure it'll be convenient, Miss Goodman. Come right in. <laughs> oh, well, Leroy, take your homework upstairs, please. You too, Marjorie. Well, Eve, what a delightful surprise. I'm sorry to bother you. She just wants to see you for a minute, Miss Gilsey. Uh, yes, Bertie. Thank you. Hi, Miss Goodwin. Hello, Leroy. Marjorie. Hello. We're just leaving. I gave Uncle Mort the message about the PTA. Oh, thank you. I do hope you can come, Throckmorton. Uh, run along, Leroy. I'm going. Sit down, Eve. Make yourself at home. No, I can only stay a minute, as Bertie promised. Uh... Have you been to the barber's today? No, why? Oh, I thought you must have had something put on your hair. It smells quite nice. Oh, that. I spilled it on my vest. If you like it, I'll get some more. <laughs> you shouldn't unless you like it yourself. Well, it's masculine. Uh, that's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen you in quite a while, Eve. Where have you been keeping yourself? Oh, I'm still living in the same place. You haven't been around to call on me. Well, what about tonight? Can't we duck this PTA meeting? I wish we could. We could go for a drive somewhere. It's not too cold out. Or we could just sit around and have a little conversation. Um, I'd like to know what you think about the, um, well, the new books and the politics and everything. <laughs> I'd like to encourage your uh, intellectual interests, but I've got to go to this meeting. And I hate to ask you to help me, but I'm desperate. Well, why should it be your problem? <laughs> it's my job. Please, Doc Morton, be nice. If you'll just come around for half an hour and sing a few little things, the ladies are crazy about you. <laughs> for me? All right, Eve. For you. Oh, you're a darling. Uh, eight o'clock in the high school auditorium. Hmm? All right. Uh, wait a minute, Eve. Uh, this thing doesn't have to last very long, does it? Well, it should be over by ten. Why? Well, how would it be if I took you home after? Well, I... Just I'd... for some conversation... About books. <laughs> well, for a little while. And thank you, Throckmorton. <laughs> You change your clothes, Unky. Going out? Yes, after supper. Gonna sing for the PTA, Unk? Maybe I am, maybe I'm not, Leroy. Miss Goodwin has asked me as an old friend to help her out of a difficult situation. I'm considering it. Doorbell. I'll get it. Bertie's getting it. Leroy, you're developing an extremely tedious habit of proclaiming the obvious. Try to curb it. Okay. Good evening, Bertie. Is Mr. Gildersleeve at home? Yes, he is, Miss Ransom. Well, I know it's almost his supper time, but if I could just see him for a minute... Come right in, ma'am. What's fair for one is fair for all. Oh, for goodness sake. Miss Ransom wants to see you a minute, Mr. Kilsey. <laughs> yes, thank you, Bertie. Hello, Leela. Hello, Throckmorton. Good evening, Marjorie. Hello, Mrs. Ransom. Uh, Throckmorton. Hi, I... Mrs. Ransom. Oh, hello, Leroy. I didn't see you there. Mom, but you're growing. Uh, Throckmorton, I just wondered if you were doing anything important this evening. Are you? I'm afraid I am, Leela. I've agreed to appear at a meeting of the Parent Teachers Association. Throckmorton, you've got to get out of it. I simply must see you this evening. But, Leela, I've made a commitment. They have to have a speaker. Oh, pooh. They can find a million speakers. You don't want to sit around with a lot of mothers and talk about progressive education. Well, I wasn't going to talk about progressive education. I was, uh, well, I... I was feeling sentimental. 
I thought we could have such a lovely evening together. Leela, I promise. I have a special reason for asking. <laughs> well, Leela, I... Uh, Leroy, go upstairs. <laughs> or out in the kitchen or someplace. I won't have you staring at me. Gosh, what did I do? You too, Marjorie. Okay, okay. Please, Rock Martin, for Leela. Oh, you can get Horace Hooker to go to the PTA meeting instead. Hooker? Mm -hmm. By George, I might at that. What time is it? About a quarter of six. I wonder if he's still down at the office. Oh, Horace loves to do things like that. Oh, will you come over early, Throckmorton? Right after supper. That is, if I can I'll find Hooker. I'll be expecting Hooker. you. Don't disappoint me now, you hear? But, Leela, what if I can't... Yes, I'm counting on you, Throckmorton. What do you know? Eve and Leela. Never rains, but it pours. Say, I wonder if that stuff Peavy sold me... Now... <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear from the great Gildersleeve again in just a minute. In these days when spreads for bread are not so abundant, you've probably had to do without your favorite brand now and then. But I'm still as choosy as ever, Mr. Lang. I always ask for parquet margarine. It's been our favorite for years. It's a favorite spread in millions of homes. First of all, because people know that any product made by the Kraft Foods Company is sure to be of highest quality. And once you've tried parquet margarine, you just naturally prefer its fresh, country-sweet flavor. Prefer it because it tastes so good on rolls, toast, pancakes, and waffles. That's why I always ask first for parquet margarine at my food dealer's. And likely as not, he'll have it for you from time to time because Kraft is continuing to make all the parquet margarine possible with present supplies. Your food dealer is doing his best to supply you with this spread that's so rich in food energy, so country sweet in flavor, and so economical, too. I suggest that you always look first for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. <laughs> Back to our story. Having called Judge Hooker's house, Gildersleeve has learned that the judge is working late at his office. Let's watch Gildersleeve's maneuvers now as he enters the city hall, tiptoes down the corridor chambers, and finding the door ajar, wanders into the judge's chambers. The judge is absorbed in a document. Gildersleeve helps himself to a chair. Uh, Horace? Yes, Gildy? Hello. Hello. What you doing? Reading a brief. Oh. Horace. Yes? You're interested in education, aren't you? Not at the moment. I'm reading a brief. But I mean, you are interested in it. <clears throat> After all, you're a member of the school board. So are you. Well, yes, but... Uh... Now, let me read this. Court convenes at nine in the morning. What I'm driving at, Judge... What are you driving at? What do you want? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> I just uh, dropped in. Hmm. That a new picture you got on the wall there? Nope. Oh. <laughs> Horace, what are you doing tonight? I am not addressing the Parent Teachers Association if that's what you've got in mind. Oh. <laughs> oh, it never occurred to me, Horace, but what an excellent suggestion. It was not a suggestion. You know who they got for the guest of honor now? Oh, this will kill you. Me. What can I do? Sing a little. When I was a young lad. <laughs> who wants to hear that? Who, indeed. <laughs> but you, Judge, now, you can't sing for sour apples, maybe. I can at least carry the tune. We won't go into that. <laughs> you can't sing, but you can do something much better for the PTA. You can give them food for thought, Horace. You can bring things home to them. What can I bring home to them? Why, if... Uh, the time is too short, Gildy. As I told Miss Goodwin, I don't like to decline an invitation of this sort. Miss but... Goodwin, Eve asked you before she asked me... <laughs> Who do you think suggested you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very flattering, old friend, but I fear you're being too modest. You see who they go to first. It's not modesty. There's no time. The meeting's tonight. There's no time to prepare anything. Oh. 
Say, how about that speech you gave last year, Judge? What was it called? Education and the law or something? Don't tell me you've forgotten that. Why, I'll never forget it as long as I live. But, Gildy, I gave that before the PTA. It was well received, wasn't it? It was. It caused comment in the newspaper, didn't it? It did. A lot of good, solid stuff in that speech, Horace. Wasn't the kind of thing that could be absorbed in one hearing. I'll tell you why that speech caused comment, if you'd like to know. Because it dealt with a current problem of vital importance. A proper respect for law, my friend, should be inculcated in the young at the earliest possible age. True, true. It should begin in school, in kindergarten even. It should begin before that, in the home. I'll even go farther and say that it should begin with heredity. But if it's too late for heredity, let's begin where we can. <laughs> I ask you, how can a child possibly learn respect for the law if at home he sees his parents flaunting it? Oh, that is so true. I say to you, my friend, law is the very keystone of our civilization. The very keystone. Keystone. The keystone. I say to you... Don't say it to me, Judge. Say it to the PTA. Yes. I must take another look at that speech. There are one or two things I might add. Meetings at 8.30, you say? 8.30. Keystone of our civilization. It's rather a good phrase. <laughs> I say to you, my friends, love. When I the was a young stone. man before the my beard was gray. could be doing this at the PTA. Oh, gracious, I certainly don't know what you expected. Well, I, uh, I mean, well, gee, after all, you got me to break a date to come here. You said it was going to be something special. It is. This is an evening I shall always remember, Throckmorton. Always. Well, all right. Let's make it something to remember. <laughs> oh. um, we could find a more comfortable place than the piano band. How about over here? Now, Throckmorton, we're going to have to have an understanding. I thought we had one. If I let you hold my hand, do you promise you won't go any farther? What do you think? <laughs> I'd have to ask you to promise that. That would have to be the understanding. Leela, what's this all about? Why are you so particular all of a sudden? Well... I don't know that there's anything so sudden about it. I've always been particular. Oh, but there, I mustn't be put out with you. Not tonight. I know you didn't mean... Uh, what's wrong? What is that smell? I've been smelling it all evening. It's me. <laughs> Where is it? On your hair? It's all over. Don't you uh, like it? Well, I don't know, Throckmorton. I'm not sure. If I could get far enough away to find out... Well, I'm sorry if I've offended. Oh, it's nothing like that. It's it's just a little overpowering is all. Well, don't blame me. Blame Peavy. He sold it to me. So if you don't like it, the joke's on him. <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like it. As a matter of fact, I think in time I could become quite used to it. Um, do you like the perfume I'm wearing, Throckmorton? I can't smell it. <laughs> Here, I'll put some on my wrists. Mm. And and behind my ears. Yum, 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 yum. Ouch! Oh, Leela, I'm terribly sorry. I don't know why I did that. Biting, really. Something snapped inside me, Leela. <laughs> Oh, 
My mind just went blank, I guess. It was the perfume. And your little pink ear. Will you forgive me, Leela? Please forgive me. Well, I guess it wasn't your fault, Rock Martin. You couldn't help yourself. That's the girl. See, I'll kiss it and make it all better. Oh, no, you don't. I think we'd better go back to the piano. Piano? I've sung every song I know, Leela. I've sung till I'm hoarse. Can't we oh, forget... Oh, you must try to humor me this evening, Rock Martin. Because this is a very special evening. You keep saying that, but I don't see anything so special. I know. How could we ever forget? Huh? Tell you the truth, Leela, I'm kind of sick of that song. Sick of it? How can you say that? Why, that's always been our song. I know, but can't we get a new one? There's an old saying, Throckmorton. The old songs are the best. The old songs bring memories. All evening, nothing but memories. Remember the first time you ever sang that to me, Throckmorton? Yep. That was four years ago. You were darling then. Of course, you were a lot younger. I'm just as young as I ever was. No, you're not. You've changed. How? You don't seem so interested anymore. I am, too, but ye gods, you got me sitting here with my hands tied. Oh, it, it isn't that. <laughs> you didn't miss me this summer. Now, that just isn't true, Leela. I did so miss you. You didn't write to me only once or twice. Well, I was busy, and I knew you'd be back, so what's the use? That's easy? just it. You knew I'd be back. If you'd really missed me, you'd have shown a little more interest in where I spent my vacation and who I met while I was down there. You'd have been a little more curious. I'm as curious as anybody. Where did you go, Leela? Doesn't matter now. It's too late. What do you mean, it's too late? Oh, Throckmorton, I'm afraid I've got to wound you, and I don't want to. If you're still sore because I bit your ear, you can bite mine. I don't care. <laughs> oh, no. No, it isn't that. Oh, how shall I tell you? Tell me what? Just tell me. No, no, that would be too cruel. I don't get it. Uh, wait here, Throckmorton. Wait here. Hmm? Hey, where are you going? Wait. Hmm. Hey, chocolates. Mm, I shouldn't, but I wonder which is a chewy one. Somebody's been biting into these. Well, I'll take a chance. I'll... Oh, all over my tie. Oh, <laughs> uh, just sampling one of your chocolates here. Throckmorton, do you notice anything different about me? Just that little mishap here, but it'll come off. Throckmorton, please look at me. Yeah? You notice anything different? No, why? You're not very observant, I must say. I'll come closer. Now, do you notice anything? <laughs> New dress? No, no. You've seen this dress hundreds of times. I'll give you a hint. It's jewelry. The earrings. Earrings. I always wear earrings. It's on my left hand, stupid. Oh. Where'd you get the ring? Hey, where'd you get the ring? From someone. Leela, is that an engagement ring, or did you put it on that finger to remind you of something? It's on that finger to remind me of someone I met down south. He's a doctor, if you're dying to know, from Virginia. Leela, you aren't going to marry this fellow. Uh-huh. For heaven's sake, why? Because I love him. She, Leela. There, I've wounded you. But why didn't you tell me, Leela? What's the idea of waiting till now and then getting me over because here? Because I wanted to be sure first, Throckmorton. I wanted to be sure of myself. Well, you might have tipped me off. If I'd had a little time, I might have done something. But no, the first quack that comes along, you let he him... He happens to be a very fine doctor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too, Throckmorton. Does it mean so very much to you? <laughs> <laughs> Poor boy. Have a chocolate. I couldn't. Oh, to think I had to do this to you. When are the services, Leela? <laughs> October 9th. The invitations are already in the mail. That's why I had to tell you tonight. 
<laughs> His name is Julian Henry Culpepper. <laughs> He's terribly handsome. He's only 36. No. I'm sorry. It was terribly romantic the way we met. It was at a dance. Do you know that tune that goes? Leela, hmm? Leela, tell me something. Yes. What? Does this fellow sing? <laughs> Gracious, no! You should hear him. <laughs> Shove over. Why? What for? Speak to me of love. No fail. And say what I'm longing to hear. No fail, Trotman. Tender words of love. The great Gilder Slave will finish his song in just a moment. Just a short while ago, a lady with some definite ideas on the kind of quality she wants in a spread for bread told us she always asks first for parquet margarine. And I'd say that's good advice at any time, to look first and ask first at your dealers for this craft quality spread with the fresh country sweet flavor. Right now, of course, all spreads for bread are scarce. Kraft is actually producing more parquet margarine than before the war. But the amount of top-quality farm ingredients available at present for parquet still isn't enough to meet the big demand. However, supplies of parquet are going to your food dealer regularly, and he'll have some for you from time to time. So remember to look first when you shop for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by Kraft. To me of love and whisper these words to me, dear. I adore you. You know, Strock Martin. Yes. Now that it's worn off a little, I think I like that perfume you're wearing. It's not a perfume, Leela. It's a masculine scent. Whatever it is, I like it. It does something to me. It does? What's it called? Why, uh... I want to tell Julian Henry. <laughs> Wait till I see Peavy. Good night, Julian. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Whedon and Sam Moore. The cast includes Walter Tetley, Louise Erickson, and Lillian Randolph, who play Leroy, Marjorie, and Bertie. Leela Ransom is Shirley Mitchell. Eve Goodman is played by B. Banadarit. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross. And Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. The music is by Jack Meeker. Daylight saving time ends on September 28th, so next Wednesday you'll hear The Great Gildersleeve at 8.30 if you live in the Eastern Time Zone, 7.30 if you're on Central Time, 8.30 Eastern, 7.30 Central. Incidentally, there's a swell story about Gildersleeve in the October Radio Mirror magazine. This is John Lang speaking for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to be with us again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. If you pack lunches for school-going children and hard-working grown-ups, surprise them someday this week with the appetizing cheddar cheese flavor of Pabstet. This delicious cheddar cheese food is wonderfully nourishing in sandwiches. And you can cut Pabstet into wedges, too, for a tasty flavor treat with red apples for dessert. Your family can enjoy Pabstet in two tempting varieties, pimento Pabstet in the red package and golden cheddar in the familiar round yellow package. Get both kinds when you shop tomorrow. This is NBC, the national broadcast.